Hello, my dear viewers. Today's lesson is for grade 11 students. It's going to be practice and revision for the first period. I'll be discussing vocabulary, grammar, function and set book, and writing composition, reading comprehension and summary, and finally translation. I hope you will be prepared. I'll be with you right after a short break. Welcome back, my dear students. Let's begin our lesson today. First of all, as I mentioned, it's going to be vocabulary. The second section, grammar. Third section, language functions. And the fourth section is set book. Fifth section is going to be writing, then reading comprehension, summary making, and finally, translation. As you can see, vocabulary is going to be out of 24 marks, and we are going to have four questions, and each question is out of three and a half marks. So in this section, it's going to be a total of 14 marks. I want you to choose the correct answer from A, B, C, and D. Let's begin. Let's read the sentence very carefully and then answer the question. Our national airline will blank its new transatlantic service next month. We have four choices. Embark, hire, nurture, and launch. Which do you think best suits the sentence? Our national airline will Excellent. It's launch for those who have done it correct. Our second sentence. There was a serving spoon missing when she put the blank back in its box. Let's read the choices. Transition, silverware, milestone, clan. Which do you think is the best suitable answer? Yes, it is silverware. Excellent. Let's move on. Why did the manager blank the meeting? Socialize, quarrel, refill, or schedule? Think about this question. Why did the manager the meeting? Yes, why did the manager reschedule the meeting. Number four, it was very blank to see the Kuwaiti flag when we traveled abroad. It is what when you see the Kuwaiti flag? It is weary, academic, patriotic, or exuberant. How do you feel when you see your Kuwaiti flag? It is what? Excellent, it's patriotic. Well done. Number five, there are many blank within art, such as painting or sculpture. Is it bagpipes, stadiums, chains, or disciplines? There are many, what do you think? Bagpipes, the instrument, or stadium? as a football stadium, chains or disciplines. Since we have painting and sculpture, it should be disciplines. Well done. There are many disciplines within art, such as painting or sculpture. Number six, this year's performances were blank, in skill and enthusiasm. Let's read the options together. Formal, unrivaled, immediate, irritated. 
think about the choices a little bit. Read the sentence again to make sure. It is unrivaled, in other words, unique. This year's performances were unrivaled in skill and enthusiasm. Number seven, some people still blank that there is no firm evidence linking good education and better living standards. Let's read the uh, options together. Cultivate, facilitate, claim, and gaze. Read the sentence again. Read the choices again so that you cannot get conf confused. Some people still, is it cultivate? Or some people still facilitate? or claim or gaze. It is claim. Some people still claim that there is no firm evidence linking good education and better li living standards. Number eight. Why is the media so blank within the lives of celebrities? Read the choices together. Preoccupied, fanciful, dazzling, celebratory. Which one do you think is the best suitable answer? Why is the media so preoccupied with the lives of celebrities? Let's move on with our final sentence, number nine. Women in this village were encouraged to start a business of selling their blank bead jewelry. Let's read the options together. Touching, instant, intricate, sickly. Read the sentence again. Women in this village were encouraged to start a business of selling their excellent, it's intricate, bead jewelry, the complicated jewelry. Now, our next section in the vocabulary, we have words, and I want you to fill in the blanks using the suitable word from the list. We have four questions, sorry, four sentences, and each qu uh, sentence is out of two and a half marks. So, total of marks over here is 10. Let's have a look at the words. Deserted log on, cordially, replica, and academic. Have a look at the part of speech. Replica is a noun. Log on is a phrasal verb. Deserted is a verb. Academic is an adjective. And finally, we have cordially, which is an adverb. I want you to choose the correct answer so that you can be able to fill in these gaps. Let's have a look. You can blank using your name and password. What do you do using your name and password? What do you think is the correct answer? It is log on. Excellent. You can log on using your name and password. Let's move on. Last year, they all blank the house, even their grandmother. Read the sentence again and read the available words. Which one do you think best suits the sentence? Last year, they all deserted the house, or last year, they all cordially academic or replica. Last year they all deserted the house, even their grandmother. Number 12, you're blank invited to my brother's wedding party. You're academic or you're replica or you're cordially friendly. You are you are cordially invited to my brother's wedding party. Our final 
sentence in this section. Engineers like to keep a, what do they keep? Academic or replica? Let's read the sentence again. Engineers like to keep a blank of each project they carry out. Which one? What do they like to keep? Replica or academic? An extra copy. Engineers like to keep a replica of each project they carry out. Now, my dear students, we're going to move to our next section of the revision, and it's the grammar. We have two parts over here. The first part is choose the correct answer from A, B, C, and D. Let's begin. Although the demonstration of his project for a long time, we watched it till the end. Let's read it again. Although the demonstration of his project for a long time, we watched it till the end. Did it went up? went down, went off, or went on. What do you think over here? Is it off, down, on? It is. Very good. It's went on. The second question. The clock regularly blank at 7 o'clock every morning goes up or goes down? Which one do you think is the suitable answer? It is goes off at 7 o'clock every morning. Let's read it together. The clock regularly goes off at 7 o'clock every morning. Let's move on. Number 16. If they hadn't bought a ticket for the concert, they blank allowed to get in. They won't be, they wouldn't be, they won't have been, or they wouldn't have been. Look at the sentence again. Read it carefully. It is the if conditional, right? So which one do you think it is? It is wouldn't have been. So let's read it again. If they hadn't bought a ticket for the concert, they wouldn't have been allowed to get in. Before we took our cousin to the theater, he blank a stage play before. He never sees or is never seen or has never seen or had never seen. Look at the sentence carefully, read it again. You can see that there are two different actions, right, in the same sentence. So, it should be what? The first action should be in the past perfect, correct? Which one is it? Had never seen. Well done. Before we took our cousin to the theater, he had never seen a stage be play before. Let's move on. As my mother was performing Umrah, my sister blank cook our food although she had never tried it before. Can, manage to, couldn't or able to. You know that something was difficult then they were able to do it, correct? But we have a choice here between two either manage to or able to. So which one would you choose? According to what? My sister managed to or my sister able to. Since here there is no verb of be, you would choose which one? Excellent. Managed to. My sister managed to cook. Finally, the prices of petrol are steadily blank these days. The prices are what? Going on, going up, going off, or going out. Which one do you think is the correct answer? 
Let's read the sentence again. The prices of petrol are steadily going up these days. Fantastic. My dear students, now we'll move on to our second section in the grammar, which is do as shown between brackets. We have two questions. Each one is out of five marks. In total, there are ten. First question over here. The movie was boring. We watched it till the end. I want you to join using although. You have two sentences over here. Join these two words together using although. It is, although the movie was boring, we watched it till the end. Bravo for those who have tried. Let's move on. He woke up. He checked his email. Join using hardly. Join these two sentences using the word hardly. Hardly had he woken up when he checked his email. Finally, I didn't see your message. I didn't reply. They want you to use over here if. What would you write over here? If I had seen your message, I would have replied. Now, I have extra um, questions for practice, and this is correct the underlined mistakes. I know this is not going to be there in the first period, but it's just extra revision. He can't afford to take a taxi, so he came in bus. Look at the words which are underlined. He can't afford, so can't would be couldn't. He couldn't afford to take a taxi, so he came in. In would be over here. Correct, it would be by taxi, but sorry, by bus. He can't afford to take a taxi, so he came by bus. Our second sentence, when the fire bell went up, the students must leave the classroom. Went up would be, what do you think? Yes, it would be went off the students. Now must leave the classroom. Must would be over here. Perfect, had to. Let's read it again. When the fire bell went up, the students must leave the classroom. So after we corrected it, it is when the fire bell went off, the students had to leave the classroom. Our last sentence over here. No sooner had he arrived when his boss called to check on his. Over here, it's no sooner. Usually no sooner comes with what? With than. No sooner had he arrived than his boss called to check on what? On his? On him. Yes, very good. Now, my dear students, we will move on to the third section of today's revision, which is language functions. I would like you to read the sentences very carefully in order to answer. As you can see, we have a total of 20 marks, and there are four questions, each with five marks. Write what would you say in the following situation. Let's have a look at the first situation. Your brother was granted a scholarship abroad. What would you say in this situation? We may give an advice. We, sh we can agree or disagree, and or we can also express our own opinion. So in this situation, your brother was granted a scholarship abroad. I advise you to study hard. This is also an example. 
uh, you may say, oh, I agree with you. It's uh, a great idea that you are going to study or you've granted a scholarship. Congratulations, my dear brother. Let's move on with our second situation. Your friend invites you to his graduation ceremony. Here you have an invitation. So you may either apologize, accept, or reject the invitation. And you can also give reasons. So what would you say in this situation? If you apologize, you can, a polite way, you can always say, I'm sorry, I cannot come. If you accept the invitation, you can say, uh, thank you for inviting me, uh, I'll be there. You may also reject, I'm afraid I can't come, uh, my dad doesn't allow me, or I have to go to the doctor. These are some of the examples in which you can answer. Our third situation, your mom always drinks coffee. What do you think over here you would say in this situation? You may always what? Give an advice, express preferences, expressing likes and dislikes. If you give an advice, you should always tell your mom, you shouldn't drink a lot of coffee. It's not good for your health. Expressing preferences, you can always say, I prefer drinking tea to, uh, than drinking coffee. If you say likes, dislikes, I don't like to drink coffee, simply like that. OK. Um, number four, the fourth situation is tourists are only attracted to a country by festivals. What would you say in the situation? We have possible answers. Uh, you may express your opinion over here, and you may always disagree. Because festivals, what? They usually attract tourists, correct? So in this situation, tourists are only attracted to a country by festivals? No, I disagree with you. Or express opinion. You may always give a benefit for festivals. What are the benefits of festivals? Or festivals have a lot of benefits, OK? Now, our fourth section, it is set book. We have questions, and I'd like you to answer in full sentences. We have, for the first section, it's a set book questions, which are two questions in order for you to answer. Question number one is, why is it important for family members to meet on special occasions? Why do you think it's important to meet on special occasions? Do you think it's important? Yes, it is. Why do you think that? Think about it a little bit. When you gather, when you meet in important celebrations, events, occasions, why do you think it's important? It's important because they meet to discuss family matters. They can also share happy moments and strengthen relations. Besides, they can exchange experience and seek the elder's advice. Let's read the question again. How can festivals benefit the society? As I've mentioned that festivals have a lot of benefits, correct? But over here, how can festivals benefit the society itself? By? It attracts many tourists, and they also have become an important economic event. You can always express your own opinion. It's a general question. Question number three. In your opinion, why do business people use to go to coffee houses in the past? As you've uh, taken in your um, textbook, um, that there were a lot of coffee houses in the past, correct? 
and lots of people used to go there. But why do you think the business people go to coffee houses? Of course, there are several reasons. They usually uh, catch up on the latest business news. They keep up to date with scientific developments, read newspapers, listen to lectures, do business, and some people chat about the state of the world. Again, you can always express your own opinion, write your own answer. What do you think? Why are there other answers? These are just examples. Our next section is about the literature. You have one question and you should answer it. Number four, it is against our religion and all human values to treat servants harshly. Elaborate. In our religion, are we supposed to treat servants harshly? No. How do you think we should treat them? Think about it a little bit. What would you say? How would you answer this question? Let's have a look together. We should be merciful with them and we should give them the respect they deserve and offer them comfortable living conditions. We should treat them in a good way. Okay. Now, my dear students, as I've mentioned in set book, they are general questions. You should always answer them in your own opinion or what do you think about it. There are not specific answers and always write in full sentences. Do not write points. After the short break, we will be covering writing, reading comprehension and summary, and finally, the translation. See you later. Welcome back, my dear students. As I have mentioned earlier, I'll be discussing writing, reading comprehension and summary, and translation. Let's begin with writing. Writing is out of 30 marks. We have an outline and the actual essay. Let's read the tips for the essay writing. Get started by brainstorming. Let your first draft flow. Develop three essay parts. First, which is the introduction, which is one paragraph that introduces your essay. The body, several paragraphs explaining the main idea with examples. Third part is the conclusion. It's one paragraph that summarizes and ends the essay. Proofread and make corrections. Let's read what you need to write about. We all celebrate important events in our lives and keep good memories of them. Plan and write a report of about 12 sentences describing. Let's read the guide ideas. An important event you recently celebrated, the activities of the celebration, how you felt after the celebration. Now, when we begin our outline, we always start with the introduction. We use a topic sentence and we just uh, describe uh, our, the celebration. In the body, after, since we chose the celebration, we should have a main idea and we should support it using some examples. We have two main ideas over here. Uh, you can always um, add if you really want to. Over here, we can have the um, feeling how you felt about the, the uh, celebration. And we also have the main idea, the activities that are taking place during the celebration. 
of course, you need to use some examples. Finally, you need the conclusion. In the outline, always write points. Do not write a whole paragraph. Conclusion is summarizes your topic, the essay itself. After you have finished writing your outline, then you move on to your essay. Then you have to write them in different paragraphs. Stick to your outline, the introduction, then the body. Uh, you may have two paragraphs. And finally, your conclusion. This is your last paragraph. Our second section for today's revision is going to be reading comprehension. Reading comprehension has two parts. The first one is uh, questions and answers, and the second part is the summary. This is the first part. Let's read together. Throughout history, there have been many women who have changed the world. Marie Curie is one of them. Marie Curie was a Polish scientist who won the Nobel Prize in both chemistry and physics. She was the first female professor of the University of Paris, where she made groundbreaking work in the field of radioactivity. Mary was the youngest of five children, born in 1867, Warsaw, Poland. She brought up in a poor but well-educated family. Mary excelled in her studies and won many prizes. At an early age, she became committed to the idea of Polish independence. The occupation made life difficult for all people, especially scientists. The whole situation upset her and she wished to be able to teach Polish women who were deprived of education. Unusually for women at that time, Mary took an interest in chemistry and biology. Since opportunities in Poland for further study were limited, Mary went to Paris, where she worked in teaching young children in their home. She was able to study at the Sorbonne, Paris. Struggling to learn in French, Mary threw herself into her studies, leading a humble life dedicated to studying. She went on to get two degrees in physics and maths, finishing top in her school years. After she married Pierre Curie, Mary pursued her studies in radioactivity. In 1898, this led to the discovery of two new elements, one of which she named polonium after her home country. Mary used the properties of radium to burn away diseased cells in the body. This was called Curie therapy. She was awarded the Nobel Prize for this discovery for physics in 1903. She was awarded a second Nobel Prize in chemistry for the discovery of antinium. During World War I in 1914, Mary installed X-ray machines in hospitals, enabling better treatment for over a million soldiers. Mary Curie died in 1934 of cancer. It was an unfortunate side effect of her own studies into radiation, which were to help many people. Now, my dear students, after reading this text, we move on to our questions, but you always have to read it more than once. Read it twice, and then you may also read it the third time when you look at the questions and try to answer them. The first part in our reading comprehension is that you have to choose the correct answer from A, B, C, and D. The first question, the best title for this passage could be what do you think is the best title for this passage? Is it the discovery of polonium, women in Poland, or World War I, or an exceptional woman? After reading 
your article. What do you think is the best suitable title? It is? Yes, it is an exceptional woman. The answer is D. Our second question. The underlined word excelled in the second paragraph means, look at the underlined word. Let's go over the sentence itself. Mary was the youngest of five children, born in 1867, Warsaw, Poland. She was brought up in a poor but well-educated family. Mary excelled in her studies and won many prizes. Let's read the uh, answers available. Shined, failed, neglected, or stopped. What do you think is the correct answer? What does excelled over here means? It's closest to what the correct answer is? A, well done. Number three, we have another word, which is the underlined word which in the fifth paragraph refers to th something. What does it refer to? When you have words like that, when they say what is, uh, does this word refers to or what is the underlined word, always go back to the text, read it carefully. Read what's written before that and a sentence after that. Let's read this together. After she married Pierre Curie, Mary pursued her studies in a radio activity. In 1898, this led to the discovery of two new elements, one of which she named polonium after her home country. Let's look at together the uh, available answers. The underlined word which in the fifth paragraph refers to radioactivity, her studies, home country, or two new elements. It is? Very good. It's two new elements. Let's move on to the fourth question. Which of the following is true about women in Poland at the time of occupation? We have one answer. Which one do you think is true? They were quite satisfied with the situation there. They were all interested in chemistry and biology. They were prevented from their right to learn. They were able to resume their further study. Which one do you think? You can always go back. And then, which one do you think? Very good. It's the answer C. They were prevented from their right to learn. Question number five. Mary died at the age of, I know over here they didn't mention what age, but they already mentioned here when she was born. Mary was the youngest of five children born 1867 Warsaw Poland Marie Curie died in 1934 of cancer so you can simply calculate it subtract so what do you think the answer is the answer we have a couple of choices 67 36 47 or 76 after you've calculated it, what is the correct answer? Correct, it's 67. Now, my dear students, we have the second section for reading comprehension in which you have questions and you have to answer them. You can always go back to the text and then answer your question. Read again if you need. Answer the following questions referring to the passage. Three questions, each question out of four marks in total for this part is 12 marks. Let's read the first question. In which fields did Mary win the Nobel Prize? Which fields? Do you remember what subjects, the fields themselves? They are chemistry and physics. But you should always answer these questions in full sentences. 
So in this case, your answer in a full sentence would be, the fields in which Mary won, what? The Nobel Prize were what? Were chemistry and physics. Second question, how did the Polish people live under occupation? The answer would be, a difficult life. They were upset. Women were uneducated. Over here, there are points. But when you write down in, in your exam, it should be in a full sentence. Number eight, why did Mary go to Paris to receive her further education? Why do you think? It's because since opportunities for further study were limited in Poland. Finally, our last question is, how did Mary help in treating the soldiers during World War I? How did she help them? The correct answer is she installed x-ray machines in hospitals. Now, my dear students, we'll move on to our summary. Always and always read what's given, what you're supposed to be writing about, what's the summary. Over here it says, in four sentences of your own, summarize paragraph five in answer to the following question. You're given a question, read it carefully so that you know what you're going to write, what's the summary about. What were Marie Curie's main achievements? So go back to paragraph 5, underline the important uh, parts and what are her achievements. Underline them and then you can write them in full sentences. It should be in a whole paragraph. Let's read the answer together. She discovered two new elements, one of which is polonium. She used the properties of radium to burn away diseased cells in the body. She was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1903. She also discovered antinium and was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry. Finally, Mary installed X-ray machines in hospitals during World War I. Try to connect the sentences together. Do not write your answer in points. It should be in a whole paragraph. Now let's move on with our final section in today's revision, which is the translation. Let me remind you that in the translation, when you read something, and want to translate it, do not translate every single word. Take it as a whole. What's the meaning? We want the meaning itself, but not every single word. Let's read together. Mary was the youngest of five children, born in 1867, Warsaw, Poland. She was brought up in a poor but well-educated family. Mary excelled in her studies and won many prizes. At an early age, she became committed to the idea of Polish independence. Now, as I've mentioned earlier, do not translate every single word. Let's translate it together. The first part was, Mary was the youngest of five children, born in 1867, Warsaw, Poland, which is كانت ماري الأصغر سنا ضمن خمسة أطفال وقد ولدت في عام 1867 في وارسو في بولندا. Okay, and the English side was she was brought up in a poor but well-educated family. نشأت ماري في أسرة فقيرة ذات تعليم جيد وقد تفوقت ماري في دراستها وفازت بالعديد من الجوائز. Mary excelled in her studies and won many prizes. At an early age, she became committed to the idea of Polish independence. Finally, وفي سن مبكر التزمت بفكرة استقلال بولندا. Over here, we're not translating every single word as I mentioned. It's as a whole. Our last and final part in the translation, which is translating 
Arabic into English. Let's read together. سعود هل تعلمون أن الدوانيات تخدم وظيفة سياسية واجتماعية هامة في الكويت؟ سهام نعم لأن بعض السياسيين الكويتيين يعقدون لقاءات لناخبيهم في الدوانيات. Let's translate it together. What's the translation in English? سعود do you know that Duwania serve an important political and social function in Kuwait? Siham, yes, because some Kuwaiti politicians hold Duwanias for their constituents. My dear students, as you can see, we have come to an end with our lesson today, which was revision for the first period. And if you have any questions, please go back to your teachers and ask so that you can have uh, your answers and everything will be clear. Thank you, my students. I hope you have benefited from the lesson and see you next time.